is Homes Under the Hammer on the, uh, the cards <laughs> for one. <laughs> I would love Homes Under the Hammer. How fun would that be? So I always knew that I'd wanted to go into property at some point. Um, I'd actually started as an angel investor throughout my 20s um, because I did a lot of contracts abroad and would save up a chunk of money and then um, invest that into other people's deals. Mm-hmm. I think playing to your strengths rather than trying to be and do everything. Mm-hmm. Not putting too much pressure on yourself or that constant negative talk of like, oh, you've not done that again, you're so stupid, or, you know, just being a bit more kind to see yourself and a bit more realistic. Nobody's got it figured out. Nobody's been here before. We're all just going through life together. You know, don't don't be too hard on yourself. Have a bit of fun along the way. Before we kick this episode off, I want to let you know about our next show that will be taking place in Manchester on Wednesday, the 4th of September at Manchester City Stadium, the Etihad. Doors to the show will open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We have two keynote stages, multiple exhibitors, and lots of opportunity for networking. Details to the show is in the description. Tickets are free. We hope to see you there. Welcome to episode 10 of the Property Developer Show, the podcast. Today, I'm joined by Lizzie Warburton, who was the host at the Birmingham Show on the 1st of May, the host uh, with the most S. <laughs> she did a fantastic job. She's also a, a presenter and property investor. Lizzie, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure. I mean, it's not very far for you to travel, obviously being Liverpool-based. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, from the journey, I guess, in TV and mm. presenting, obviously you do the the Sky TV, the, is it the Property Apprentice? Property Elevator. Elevator, yeah. yeah. So I guess my big, biggest question, what I wanted to know, uh, very selfishly, is how <laughs> did you manage to end up sort of within that kind of sector and field? Yeah, well, I come from an acting background, so I went to drama school and was in musical theatre for from when I was four years old, really. And then um, late 20s, decided to move from working nights because theatre and performing is late nights, long weeks, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of uncertainty. Tried to move into something else that was still kind of performance based, but something that maybe had a little bit more longevity. And um, I got a, a job for the Urban Music Awards hosting on the red carpet, doing live interviewing. And I absolutely loved it. And it just kind of went from there. Brilliant. And then you got obviously into the the property side of things. Was that through sort of the property elevator side or were you sort of already interested in in the industry before that? So I always knew that I'd wanted to go into property at some point. Um, I'd actually started as an angel investor throughout my 20s um, because I did a lot of contracts abroad and would save up a chunk of money and then um, invest that into other people's deals. Mm -hmm. So that was how I started uh, and I also bought my own place in London and then um, sold that, had no idea what to do with the cash Mm -hmm. and then lockdown hit. Mm. So I took a 12-month mentorship which after month one went completely online and that was how I then made the move into property. Started looking at ways I could blend presenting and property together found Property TV and the lovely Michael Hammond mm-hmm. um, and kind of sent my my reel and my CV off to him. And a few months later, he came back to me with an idea that had been pitched to him. Um, and they were looking for a host for the show and went for a screen test. And, and that was how they kind of both merged together, completely out of the blue, really. Amazing. I mean, it is, um, to me, it seems that they're both your passions in mm. one. And that's incredible. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Yeah, certainly. And and I suppose um, the the investing side of things, what is it that you sort of obviously invest in other people's projects and then I'm assuming you're doing your own sort of projects. What sort of projects? I know you've got uh, obviously your own home that you're working on at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but what other sort of projects were, have you been working on over the last few years? So um, I've flipped mm-hmm. a lot and um, I have a small portfolio of buy to lets in Liverpool. Right. Um, I haven't actually bought anything myself for over a year now, um, except for my own house. I um, I wanted to have a little bit of a break. I went away for six months last year, traveling, mm-hmm. um, still managed to do a lot of work abroad um, for my online content, which is 
really great. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't focus on buying or building my portfolio anymore. I wanted to, yeah, have a little little rest. I'd got a bit overwhelmed because um, also trying to build a, you know, a new presenting career and a new property business, two very much full-time jobs. I'm self-employed. There's a lot of uncertainty financially. Um, so I'd, I think I'd kind of burnt the candle a little bit at both ends. Mm. So chose to take a break in 2023 and have come back 2024 kind of ready to go. Mm -hmm. Anything that came to me last year, I sourced on and sold it for a fee. Had a couple that sold at auction for a nice uplift and um, outsourced to a few HMOs um, and a few flip projects as well. So still kind of kept my toes in. Yeah, yeah, amazing. I think um, I, I think it's important to understand, um, I guess, that self-awareness piece, you know, f feeling a bit overwhelmed. And I guess yeah. uh, it's not a thing that people often talk about. And I think it's, it's a really valid point and understanding where, when to take a break yeah because i mean it's a marathon not a sprint and most people are sprinting and, and often those that do sprint never really uh, go just on. did a marathon too i, I right. know congratulations we'll go on to that because <laughs> we'll plug plug the link as well at some point oh, thank you. <laughs> um so yeah it's i think it's um it, it's it's refreshing to hear to be honest and i think um i suppose moving forwards for for this year then i guess obviously still doing the presenting obviously fact the a plug in the the, the, the developer show again uh, did a fantastic job uh, there and then I guess from an investing perspective obviously you're doing your, your, your own home at the moment mm -hmm. what, what's kind of is you looking for actively looking for the next project yes I am indeed I'm now going into HMOs um in Liverpool in kind of the surrounding areas of Liverpool okay. really um I'm doing social housing mm -hmm. um, and they're the properties and the projects that I sourced on to people last year. So I already kind of have that relationship going now. I've just got to figure out a way to make it work for myself because I will need investors to mm -hmm. get involved. Yeah. Um, I have a great project management team here, great build team. Everybody's in place. Um, we just need to find find the right deal. Mm -hmm. And um, what sort of platforms are you using to, are you doing a lot of direct to vendor stuff? Is it yeah. mostly, right, okay. Yeah, not always though. I, I've found things on Rightmove mm -hmm. many a time. My house that I've just bought, that was kind of two years in the making. Right, okay. um, And that was on, on an online portal. I do think there's deals out there as well. You've just got to sift through a lot more online i think sure and patience mm, yeah you need that in this game for sure mm. uh, what's the reason it took two years the, the house that you're in at the moment he wouldn't accept my offer oh, right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i just knew the amount of work that was involved in mm. it it didn't work as a buy to let um and it is in an article four area so it couldn't really have been turned into another hmo mm -hmm. um so I knew really that it only worked at like either a good flip or something for me to kind of keep hold of for a couple of years and then upsize my own personal house. Mm -hmm. So I just kept on at him every couple of months. I'd check in. He had five sales fall through. Wow. Blimey. And then and then I got the message. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the what it's about, message. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The, the persistency of being able to, yeah, keep refreshing that you know yeah i'm here don't forget yeah yeah me. and don't get me wrong it was a very fair price i wasn't trying to like shark him or anything mm -hmm. it's just he was looking at what had gone for sale in the area mm -hmm. and he was comparing it to very inaccurate comparables mm -hmm. whereas i had a build team out there three times we knew exactly what was what was wrong we we knew a, a rough cost of what it was going to be um, and once I very clearly explained all that in a lot of detail, I think he then believed me. Um, and I think he'd gone and got a few quotes himself to maybe do it up mm -hmm. and sell it on himself. Mm -hmm. Saw that my quote was, you know, accurate mm -hmm. and decided to give the stress away. What do you think um, is the secret to, I guess, getting that deal then? Do you think it was a persistent sort of you know reminders yeah i'm i like to think one of my strengths is building relationships with people um i love meeting people i love learning about people i do like forming that uh, relationship um so i think going that extra mile with people makes all the difference Absolutely. um yeah 
No, good stuff. And in terms of like the direct to vendor side of things, is that how you've sort of sourced your other projects? And as, as you mentioned, what if you can, uh, not too much detail because we you don't want to share too many of your secrets, but what sort of methods are you using to sort of find deals within, I guess, your areas? Yeah, well, telling everybody about mm-hmm. what you do, no matter who. You know, my last project that I sold at auction was my mum's best friend's friend. And she was she came into a, a property in central Liverpool. Her brother passed away, was left the house, had no idea what to do with it. And a beautiful grade two listed building. And she was like, I think I'm just going to put it at auction. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, oh, my my daughter's in property. Um, I'll I'll maybe ask her. So I went round and had a look at it with her and helped her with the whole process. Again, it it had no deeds. Um, It wasn't registered on land registry. So it took nine months um, for her to get a rightful ownership of it. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it's called now. but I helped her find a solicitor. I took her to solicitor appointments in Liverpool. I think just going that extra mile helps mm. um, secure yeah, yeah. more deals. I couldn't agree more. I've got some examples of, I uh, recently did a, like an auction trade or whatever you want to call yeah. it and bought it, uh, you know, a good price. Yeah. But I'd been working with that landlord for three or four years, building the rapport, met his kids, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I, I, probably mentioned it before on this podcast but he's slowly but surely starting to sell his portfolio to me and nice and that that came through that building relationship you know having and you know i didn't approach it from an ungenuine perspective i was Mm -hmm. i was genuinely interested in Mm -hmm. meeting his family and what have you he's such a a, a eccentric person he was an ex-surveyor um estate management all sorts of stuff amazing person and um i think they're the ones that really pay dividend over the long term. And it's a win-win scenario anyway, because like, you know, in your case, you help them get the deed. Yeah. Then you've got the property out the back end of it. For me, I've helped him with, with various stuff and I'm getting, you know, the benefits of that through the relationship. And mm. he's happy with that. I'm happy with that. And I think uh, that's the beauty of property in, in my it opinion. Is. For yeah. Sure. Generating like a win win for two people, it's the best thing ever. Yeah. 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 100%. And that, if you're a people person, mm. you can't get a better scenario, really. Because mm. you, I mean, obviously, you and I have met through property. Yep. You know, we probably, I, I was never into drama or acting or anything like that. So our paths would have probably never across yep. but prophecy yep. brings such a diverse group of people together and we're all on the common ground of yeah that win-win scenario mm. sharing our uh, stories on podcasts you being at the events you know all that sort of stuff i think it's it's such it's the it's the positive side of of uh, investing for sure definitely so in terms of i guess the next five years then mm-hmm. um is Homes Under the Hammer on the, um, the cards for one? <laughs> I would love Homes Under the Hammer. How fun would that be? I've actually written up a few ideas myself of things that I'd like to go and pitch. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll admit, TV is not my focus, though. Okay. Um, I feel like people aren't watching telly anymore. Mm. Everybody watches YouTube mm-hmm. now. Everybody watches short-form content. Um, and, yeah, it's just... It's not been something that I've focused on for the last couple of years. I work for a couple of YouTube channels um, and I produce content as well. So I'm not always in it, but we do a lot of like luxury property videos. Mm-hmm. I'm possibly going to be the, the summer, three months around Europe, oh, filming wow. some luxury rentals. Amazing. Um, so, yeah, it's it's not really... I think everybody thinks, you know, TV or everybody wants to be famous mm-hmm. and... It's not uh not the reason why I do it. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get that. I think um it is. I think that shines through you as a person as well. You, I, I don't get that like I want to be famous vibe. It's yeah. it's very much uh you enjoy. I can see that you enjoy what you you do. Yeah, um, I love it. Yeah, it's it's great to see. Um, so okay, homes on the hammer, but the YouTube, ver- the Lizzie version. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I mean, I absolutely would not turn down something if it came my way, of course. Mm. But I love to travel. Um. And throughout my 20s, I mainly lived around Asia, working in different shows. So the the boring side of property, you know, of having to stay here all the time um, and stay grounded mm-hmm. is, is something that I struggle with. Mm-hmm. So this last year, I've tried to think of, okay, how can I, how can I bring the travel 
side in for you know my happiness mm -hmm. um so that's why i've kind of gone down that route and so far so good cool so liverpool's a bit of a base for you then for the for the adventures yeah so and it's gonna be an airbnb when i'm not there sure sure no that makes sense no good stuff mm. let me just pause this episode for a moment to quickly introduce you to our episode sponsor the property finance collective Transforming visions into reality requires not just a great idea, but the right financial support and the best possible team around you. Specializing in development finance, bridging finance, and commercial mortgages, the Property Finance Collective are there to help you navigate complex markets to secure the funding you need, as well as being part of your team that you can rely on. With a flair for creative deal structuring, they tailor solutions that fit precisely with your project demands, ensuring speed, efficiency, and flexibility. They want to help you make the impossible possible. Now let's get back to the episode. So from the kind of ideas of investing as well as the the presenting, yeah. I know obviously they kind of loop in in a way. What's what's your favourite side of the fence? Hmm, good question. Okay, I think I think the presenting is definitely a favourite. Mm -hmm. um, however, the first steps of property getting a deal, meeting people, making those relationships, I also love. And I get super excited about like the design process. Mm -hmm. I love bringing something old back to life. But the logistical side of it, the numbers, the that's not my strength at all. Mm -hmm. And that's something I'm navigating of like, how, how can I realistically scale my business I think the answer to that would be to work with somebody mm -hmm. and not do everything on my own. Sure. So I would need to grow with somebody who had a very different skill set to what I do, mm -hmm. um, which is why I think I still prefer, prefer the presenting and the creative side of things because they're my strengths. Mm -hmm. I also have ADHD and uh, I have to be interested in something. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I could can't do it mm -hmm. I'm very open to admitting it now um I think there's a lot of people out there with the same issues especially entrepreneurs business owners creative thinkers mm -hmm. um and it's about I think playing to your strengths rather than trying to be and do everything mm -hmm. um and that's something I'm learning and, and kind of working on at the moment so to probably highlight in or to focus more on that point then of I guess um focusing more on your strengths mm. how do you find the balance with because I I, I completely um get relate. that point I relate to that point um if I'm I'm either in or I'm not in there's yeah. no sort of in between no nope. but I, as a business owner sometimes you've got to be able to do stuff that you don't want to do how do you sort of navigate that because obviously you know the numbers side you were saying but how do you sort of overcome that sort of barrier things like I bought spreadsheets that worked out deals for me so with ready-made formulas in so you could go bish bash bosh and it the yields your ev everything is kind of worked out for you mm -hmm. I think just simplifying it and making it as easy as possible for your brain mm -hmm. and getting the right people in when you can having a good accountant, um, having a bookkeeper if that if you know profit allows you to, um, and just kind of mitigating as much. I have a coach. Mm -hmm. um, Is that on property side or or both? Kind or? of just general business coach. Okay. Yeah. Um, who are ADHD specific mm -hmm. actually, um, and also total mind blank there um that's another trait <laughs> <laughs> live and direct <laughs> yeah um and also just being realistic with yourself mm -hmm. i think not putting too much pressure on yourself or that constant negative talk of like oh you've not done that again you're mm -hmm. so stupid or you know just being a bit more kind to yourself and a bit more realistic nobody's got it figured out mm -hmm. nobody's been here before yeah. we're all just going through life together you know don't don't be too hard on yourself. Have a bit of fun along the way. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. I think, um, I can't remember where I heard it, but um, I think someone said it to me once. I had a, a life coach help obviously navigate yeah. through, you know, various situations in life. And I, I go back to him on the odd occasion mm -hmm. when I'm feeling a bit of that, you know, mind fog, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And 
he always said to me very early on in, in age, you know, from that point that you're saying, you know, oh, you're stupid, you should be doing more sort of thing. He, he said, imagine if someone was actually taught, like, you know, take yourself out of your, your own mind and that was an individual. Imagine if they were talking to you and that, would you spend time with that person? Yeah. And I was like, well, Absolutely no. Not. And it's, I think it's as a entrepreneur, high achiever, you know, um, within that category, it's so difficult to navigate that mindset because you, I, I would probably, you, you can probably relate to this. You always feel like you're not doing enough mm. or you're doing the wrong things and you're missing, you mm. know, opportunities as such. And I think, um, I think to try and navigate around that, it's, it's important to have that self-awareness, which obviously is what we're discussing now. Um, yeah. and I think it's difficult. A lot of entrepreneurs probably have ADHD traits because they're, you know, good at picking up ideas, being creative, looking at things differently. And I think, yeah, when you've kind of got that kind of capacity, it's so difficult to slow down and, take things easy because yeah. then you're harden yourself to think oh, I need to do more well your nervous system isn't wired to be slow mm -hmm. we're not wired to be calm mm. we don't feel calm we very rarely are able to just switch off our brains without a glass of wine or you know reaching for something else um you know that's very generalized but in in general um so I think me and like I do a lot of yoga now breath work like I do really actively try and do things to bring me into a calmer state mm -hmm. and I feel like it's working mm -hmm. I mean I'm still I'm no I'm I've never been a crazy hyperactive person ever mm -hmm. I'm not I was never the naughty school kid um but everything is up here that's the only way I can explain it it's like I have 17 million things to do in my brain and I can't pick out one to do, or I start one and then I move on to the next, mm -hmm. um, which is which is a skill set, which is great for certain things, but for other things, it's not. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's. I think it, it probably helps you with your the fact that you've got the property side and the presenting side mm -hmm. to be able to spin both at the same time, because I think for some people that might be overwhelming to think, well, cracky, how is she doing? Yeah. You know, the investing side, which is a full-time job in yeah. itself, as well as the presenting side. But I think mm. having to, you, in a way, spin those plates, that that's probably where I, I'm the, I think I'm the same mm. in, in that sort of approach. And that's where I'm, I'm at my best when I've got too much on and I'm too busy. Yeah. Whereas if I've got one thing that I'm focusing on, I drive myself absolutely crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we funny humans? I know, I know. Why are we all so weird? <laughs> Self-inflicted stress. <laughs> yeah. But that's when, when I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Good stuff. So I guess, um, I suppose on that piece then, what, what bit of advice would you give to, I suppose, someone that maybe struggles to focus a little bit and, you know, potentially, I guess, wants to take those first steps into property, invest in what, you know, what, what advice would you have for that individual? Well, I sought out a mentor and I did like a 12 month program mm -hmm. and that helped me immeasurably um and having somebody there who has done what you're wanting to do mm -hmm. um somebody there to say no that's wrong no that's right um it was just priceless uh it's not right for everybody but for me it was so I think if you're kind of going around that loop of I don't know what to do first my approach worked for me and it may work for you as well to, to seek out a, a coach or a, or a mentor. Just do your research, make sure you get a good one. Anyone you'd recommend? Uh, I was with uh, a company and a guy called Mark Lloyd. Um, he was great, but I think I think any anybody who's looking for a mentor, you need to bond with them and you need to gel mm. with that person. Mark might not be right for somebody else. Mm. Danny Inman is brilliant. Um, I see all his stuff on on socials mm -hmm. um i've not personally been mentored by him yet i'm thinking about it mm -hmm. Haley andrews as mm -hmm. well fantastic um absolute powerhouse of a woman mm -hmm. in property there's there's a lot of great people and another piece of advice i would give when looking for a mentor is some people might not agree with this, but I'm going to say it is maybe go for somebody who's slightly older. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't really see how people who are only a few years into their career 
can then become a coach or a mentor. I just think personally that's a bit risky. Mm -hmm. It might work. They might be amazing. I might be totally wrong. That's just my opinion. But yeah. I'm I think it's important to find someone that's trodden the path that at least you're thinking uh, you know, the, yeah. the path's always different in some way, shape or form, but yeah. the kind of journey is very similar. And I, th and I think the point that you're alluding to, I probably agree with, you know, if you're 25 and you're teaching 35 year olds how to invest in property, it's the circumstances are different. If you're 25, you've probably for the last five years been living at home and mm. the resources are different. Yeah. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe they've been in property in their family their whole life maybe mm. they've started at 18 and they have seven years experience I don't necessarily think it's yeah it's it's hard it's kind of like my analogy is you wouldn't get a life coach who's 21 because mm. they haven't done life no no exactly so yeah yeah and I, I think property is a bit strange like that there's no other in industry in the world where you know you've been in it two or three years and you start teaching other people how to do it you know could you imagine being an accountant you know You've just passed your, your exam. Exactly. And yeah. You're telling other people, you know, senior people how to yeah. be in them. Hang on a minute. I don't yeah. think you've been, yeah. And I think that's where I guess the social media piece is difficult to navigate, particularly for new people that come into the industry. It's important to get that credibility piece. And that like you've you've named some more some great people there to, mm. to add to the list. You know, you've got Rod Turner, Adam Lawrence, you know, there's there's oh, Adam's brilliant. The Savoy's guys, brilliant with mm. commercial to Resi, Ranjan. Great commercial to Resi, John mm -hmm. Howard. Mm -hmm. Pff, he has bought and sold over 5,000 properties. Mental. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, what a guy. Mm. Um, yeah, there's some there's some great people out there. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you can engage in their content in a free way as well. You yeah, know, totally. Come on podcasts, they go to the show, mm -hmm. they post on social media, you know, it's the you don't have to pay for for that element mm -hmm. to get that sort of insight. And that's always a good thing to watch them first and then try and pick which one you feel is uh, is right uh, for you. So, yeah, I think it's a really good bit of advice really. Mm. Super. So, I suppose to I guess round off the episode. Mm. For someone that is maybe um, looking to find the balance between a career as well as obviously, or career running a business as you do and investing in property. What do you think is the secret to having success in, in both? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, my secret is I don't have that success yet. Sure. Um, it's a work <laughs> in progress. <laughs> um, and I think Everybody is a work in progress, constantly changing, constantly growing, constantly looking at ways to improve. Um, but I think some things that I do, which I find really useful, which other people might find useful, is have a switch off point for work, close your laptop at a certain time and do something of an evening that you can wind down mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. Remember that life is short. Like if you're going to spend 20 years of your life being completely overwhelmed and stressed out with work, think about what that's for mm -hmm. and is it really going to be worth it at the end? Like are you just solely thinking about money? Um, I never ever lead with money. I wish I was a bit more money focused, <laughs> to be honest, um, but I have to love what I do. It's it's not about the money for me. Mm -hmm. Money is a byproduct, and it's nice. Um, and and to to try and have fun and enjoy the process. Like you get to the end goal, and everybody then has a habit of right, what's next? Mm -hmm. You know, let's move on to the next project, bigger, better, more money. But appreciate as you're going through that project that you are doing something that a few years ago you only wish that you were like I've been a bit stressed this week with my house but then I was like hang on a minute Lizzie like you wanted this really badly a year ago and mm -hmm. like you're in the thick of it now like it's okay mm -hmm. um so just taking that time I think to just be a bit more present mm -hmm. I really like the word present I think I, I try and really just focus on one thing at a time as much as my brain allows me to. I put my phone away. Mm -hmm. I don't have my phone in my bedroom of a night time, which is a game changer. I have a little alarm clock. Um, 
And so that also helps me is like when I put my phone away, if I'm having a conversation with someone at dinner, I'm in that conversation. Mm. I'm not checking my phone. I'm not watching the TV as well. Yeah, that's kind of my, if that's helpful. Don't know Absolutely. if it is. I think it is, yeah. I think I took away from that, enjoy the process. Yeah, enjoy the process and be present with it. Mm. Yeah. I think a lot of people, particularly in the early days, are guilty of not doing that. They're just focused on the end result. And yeah. um, I think when people get to that destination, it's it's yeah. not. I always use Tyson Fury as the example, you know, he became, you know, the heavyweight champion of the world, absolute pinnacle of his career, and then dropped off the face of the earth, you know, addicted to drugs, alcohol, yeah. terrible state, because he lost the purpose. The purpose mm -hmm. wasn't the end goal. The purpose mm -hmm. was the process, process in getting to there. And I think um, people are guilty of falling into that trap of thinking, once, I've, once I get there, yeah. I'll be happy. Yeah. But you never... You're yeah. never happy. No. 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 I I really like that. Good stuff. Yeah. Um obviously you, you ran the marathon, so a big congratulations Thank on, you. on that front. And um I think you mentioned as well the property elevator show. Yes. Is there a new show coming soon? Yeah, we've got series seven that's coming out in June. That will be on Sky. Amazing. Um and then once it airs, it will go over onto um their YouTube channel. Super. Yeah. It's is a really it, great episode, Is it still available actually. on Sky as well or is it just on the... It's only available on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, so series one to six. I'm in series two to six. Uh, that's all there. Um, and then we've got the new one, yeah, which is a new format. Um, it's nice freshen up. It's uh, it's great. It was same a really, same really good judges, team. different judges this time. Yeah, same people, um, same angels. Um, but we have Scott, who I won't give too much away, but it's just a slightly different format. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Scott yeah. Marshall, Roma. Scott Marshall. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've got Michael Allison coming on soon from, ah, from Roma. So he's I'm sure we'll be able to hear more about it there as well. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Well, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, uh, yep. Lizzie, how can they go about doing that? Either email. Um, I have a little button on my social accounts as well, which you can click through, which will go straight through to my email address or just pop me a message LinkedIn, Instagram. Super. I'm always on there. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for coming on the podcast today. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure and uh, hopefully we've got some uh, good topic of conversation there for people to yeah, take something useful. I away. hope so. Sometimes I just think, have I just babbled a load of rubbish for half an hour? <laughs> yeah, no, I think there's some good stuff there, certainly. <laughs> hopefully. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. And thank you to everyone at home today. Obviously, a lot to unpick there with Lizzie. Some hopefully some really good lessons and, and sort of good messages in terms of spinning both a career and a business as well as the property side of things. So yeah, some fantastic stuff to take away. Thanks again for tuning in. Obviously, if you're on YouTube, please do like and subscribe. It certainly helps the podcast. And obviously, if you're listening to the audio version, please leave a review and be kind. Thanks again. Take care.